Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of the Young Grown Ups Video Transmission. Today we're going to be taking a long awaited look at McFarlane Toys Series 5 The Walking Dead TV Series Daryl Dixon and Motorcycle Deluxe Set. Now, I received this figure probably now going on probably about a month and a half ago. Uh, I know there's already been reviews out. Um, this was something that I really wanted to get around reviewing, and it just kind of got pushed to the bottom of everything else that I have, you know, set to review. So before I get going on the new stuff, which is going to be like the Game of Thrones Series 1, um, and some Marvel Select stuff, and the 1966 classic TV series Batman and Robin Hot Toys figures. I'm just going to start at the bottom of my barrel here, so to speak, and start with um, Daryl Dixon and the motorcycle set. Um, I uh, was really waiting for my local Toys R Us to get these in. I never saw them there. I've been on vacation, and I've been uh, I've hit a couple of other Toys R Us's out of town, and um, I have not come across this figure yet. From what I understand, it is being sold at Toys R Us, but as of yet, I have not seen it in stock anywhere. So maybe they're coming in stock. Maybe they're only getting a couple of them. Whatever the deal is, um, I'm not seeing them at my Toys R Us. I haven't been lucky. So I did get this thing off of BigBadToyStore.com. And I think I paid about $30 for it. Maybe $32. Um, I'm not, I don't remember now what the price was. I think it was probably like $29.99 or $32.99. But you can probably pick this set up for about $30. Um, considering the figures are about $15. Uh, you're looking at another 15 for the motorcycle. Um, <clears throat> so, um, flipping around here on uh, the back, you can see um, here's a good picture of the figure and the motorcycle. You've got the 10 inch Daryl Dixon, which we've taken a look at, and um, series five here of the figures, which is Glenn and Maggie, Tyrese. Uh, Zombie Merle and Charred Zombie. Now I'll give you guys a little bit of trivia. I actually bought all of these figures with the exception of Merle Zombie. I already had two Merles and didn't need a third. Um, I actually bought Tyrese and Glenn and Maggie and the Charred Zombie and um, and I actually did shoot a review for them but something happened on the importing of the of the, of the process, the import process and, um, and once the um, videos had gotten into my computer and I saw that they were there, I deleted them off my camera and then when I went to edit it, um, the videos weren't actually there. So I probably screwed something up and I did something silly and I lost the video footage. And anybody who reviews figures knows, once you do it once, you kind of put everything you have into it and um, you just can't really bring yourself to do it again. So I, I just can't bring myself to to bring these figures back out and do another review. Um, it was about, I would say, probably about a 45-minute video, and I reviewed all of them at once. Um, and so so that, that'll be the lost review, uh, the one that I shot, but uh, will never be seen. So sorry about that, guys. But yeah, you do have a picture of Daryl Dixon here and a, and a little um, write-up here. Uh, on Daryl Dixon and why he's so uh, popular and why McFarlane Toys is showing him so much attention. And it's true, he is one of the most popular characters uh, on the show. You can see a nice picture of Daryl sitting across his motorcycle right there. So without further ado, let's break this bad boy open. For me, it's been almost two months now that he's been sitting in my floor and uh, not being uh, opened up. So let's get him opened up, free him from the plastic prison, and take a closer look at this awesome figure set. All right, so here we have this awesome set opened up out of the package. And before we get started on the review, I did want to show you, and this probably doesn't interest anybody but me, but this is how McFarland Toys is securing their figures now um, in the package. Let me see if I get my camera to focus. Uh, as you can see, it's just a little, um, um, I don't know what this is called, but like a, a push tab. Um, you, you, these kind of just get pushed in and then they lock into place and it's stretchy so it's like a rubber band but it's got these harder um, push tabs on the end and these are just pulled across the figure and pushed in so all you have to do is just give it a good tug and the figure comes right out and uh, like I said that probably doesn't interest anybody but me but it's so much better than those old plastic twist ties or even the uh, the newer like um um, brown rope that's used to tie figures in. I just, I mean, I understand that figures need to be secured and they don't need to be, you know, easily um, stolen out of toy stores. But man, I mean, God, I hate fighting with those things just so badly. Sorry, I'm getting over a sore throat, so I have to keep wetting my whistle. Anybody that watches our weekly podcast knows I'm, a <coughs> I'm always drinking something, so. On to this review. I, I got to tell you, like, 
it, it took me about 10 minutes after I got this guy opened up to actually start filming this review because Daryl just looks so freaking awesome. I just love this figure. But some things I want to point out. First, Daryl does come with a couple of weapons. The first thing he comes with, and here, let me get this to focus, is he comes with a knife. Now, it's the same knife we've seen before. Nothing new, nothing special. Um, we've seen this with figures before. So he does come with a knife, and he does come with a crossbow. Now, this is the crossbow that we've seen uh, in the newer season seasons. Um, I guess uh, the, the last two seasons we've seen, um, Daryl has had this green camo um, crossbow that he picked up somewhere. You can see they didn't really do a camo pattern. It's more of a kind of a sloppy green paint, just kind of slapped on this thing. But, I mean, I guess it kind of looks like camo in a weird way. Um, you can see the green-tipped arrows, um, the um, the fetters, not the fletches, why the, not not fetters, but the, the fletches um, are green on here. And uh, so this is a, a slightly different, let me get the crossbow from the Wave 1 Daryl Dixon, and let's see how similar or different they are. You can see that they are indeed... Um, different uh, crossbow molds uh, you can see that the stocks are different the handles are different the uh, the grip is different um, and you can even see that it's a simple recurve crossbow over over here and then this is more of a, a compound crossbow with the gears and the compound um, wiring so you can see that it is um, an all-around completely different uh, crossbow which is really nice um, this one did have the the original did have like the little um, metal rings and a, le a leather strap plastic strap made to look like leather here um, whereas this one just has um, a soft rubber um, strap at the bottom so you do have a completely different crossbow um, for Daryl so let's get his uh, weapons out of the way we'll take a look at Daryl in just one second um, but I did just kind of want to zoom in here a little bit and uh, take a better look at this um, at this motorcycle because it's it's quite impressive. Um, lots of really nice detail on this motorcycle. Um, so first and foremost, you you you'll see that um, it it does articulate, and all of these wires are like soft, plasticky kind of wires, and you can see that they actually run through the bike um, both here you've got some down here in the uh, in the engine part and they both and they and they all kind of come through on this side as well you can see another set of rubber wires running down through there you um, you have his foot pegs uh, looks to be like I don't know if that's necessarily the kickstand or no the kickstands on this side and it actually comes down um, you can use the kickstand, but what's really cool is back here on this back tire. I want to show you because the, the saddle bags come off as well. But you can see right here on this back tire, um, it's got a little plastic tab, and you can see there's a little hole, and it's a little peg um, right here on the top. Sorry, guys. And it kind of just fits in the tire, so you can take it off to where you can have it free rolling. It can roll. Um, or you can put this little plastic base on the tire and this, this comes already on it and that, that helps it just sit just fine um, that way you can position him riding um, with the kickstand up so let me zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see some of the detail this is a crazy amount of detail on a uh, on this scale uh, six inch scale figure bike or not even six inches these are more like five inch figures so a five inch figure bike you can see the amount of detail you can see the uh, the very worn leather seat. There's even a hole um, in there in the front. You can see some of the uh, the stuffing or some of the padding uh, in the seat starting to poke through. The detail, the the wash that's on this thing is amazing. It looks very weathered, very old, very beat up. Um, you can see that the um, skull on this side is cocked more to a I would say probably a a seven or eight o'clock. Um, on the on the clock dial, but this one's turned more to like a, a five o'clock. So it, it, they're they're tilted differently. The uh, the little it's not like a sticker, but the tampo is kind of positioned um, 
off. You can see, I don't know a lot about motorcycles, but you can see the very intricately detailed um, parts of the engine. You can see down to like little bolts and rivets. I mean, this thing is just expertly crafted. I'm not sure what this thing is here. It's certainly not a uh, kickstand, but it does move a little bit. I don't know what that is. Is this maybe an additional foot peg for like a, a rider on the back? Is that what this is? This would fold down and then fold out? I'm not sure what that is, but it looks really, really nice. You can see a very old and dust covered license plate right here on the back. Plastic brake light looks really nice. You can see the gears and all the detail on the back of the, uh, the back tire and you know adequate amount of dirt and mud caked on the tires themselves which are uh, the front one is rubber because it's got some bounce and give to it this back one if it is rubber it's a very hard rubber um, notice here on the front very nice big clear plastic headlight with actually a little bulb on the inside if that's coming through if you can see it that looks amazing yeah the gas tank here on the top and then right here and I don't know how to put this on so we'll figure it out but these little um, clamps right here are for his um, crossbow so however that goes on I'm assuming it's something like this but it kind of stays right there on the, uh, the motorcycle just like he has in the show which is very very nice so we'll look at this uh, again here in just a minute um, but I do want to get on to Daryl because he looks so incredible but I did want to show that you also get these saddle bags now these do not open and they are a hard plastic held together with a piece of um, um, more pliable plastic they're very hard plastic they're not rubber at all very nice detail some weathering a very nice paintwork on the on the silver buckles I hope that's coming across because the detail on that the paint apps are just amazingly clean um, to, for them to be so tiny and uh, mine's kind of bent as you can see so just a little bending of it back and then it just sits right there on the back could probably heat that up with a um, hair dryer and then sit it on there and press it down and hold it and it'll probably kind of fit into place um, but just overall really really nice motorcycle for me this set was always about getting the better looking daryl figure uh and just you know had the motorcycle was an added bonus but after getting this thing opened up this motorcycle uh, could be the star of the show right here i mean this thing is amazing so let's get this guy out of the way and uh and take a closer look at daryl um, both the version that came with this set and uh, compare him to the, uh, the very first Wave 1 Daryl that we got that was so crazy to track down, but also so not worth it. All right, so here we have a tale of two Daryl Dixons. Um, here on the left, you have the one that comes with this set, and here on the right, you have the Daryl Dixon. Now, this is a, a remake of the original Daryl Dixon figure, which I did have. You guys will know that it was one of my very first reviews way back uh, a year or two ago. And... Um, <coughs> But this is a, a remake of that figure. This is the Daryl Dixon that came out um, last year in the Daryl Dixon, Merle Dixon, Dixon Brothers 2-pack. But for all intents and purposes, it's the exact same figure. So I just want to do a comparison to show off why we can stop hunting this figure down. This figure at one point was upwards of two to $300 on eBay. Um, the original. I had the original. I wasn't very happy with it, and I ended up selling it for about 175 bucks on eBay. I, I was lucky enough to find one of the originals in Walmart. I was in a different area of the store. I think my wife and I were maybe in the office supplies, and somebody had just sat them down. It was a Rick and a Daryl Dixon, and they were like $9.95. I picked them both up, opened them up. I had no idea how much they were going to end up being on eBay, and, um, and had them on my shelf for a long time. Did a review of them. Like I said, it was one of the first reviews I did, and then I saw after about six months, uh, sorry, my, my phone's going off, put that on vibrate, um, after a few months I saw that it was going up sky high uh, on, um, on eBay, and I ended up um, selling it. I think I sold it for, like I said, about $175, and I ended up buying a Hot Toys figure with it. Hawkeye, I think. I think I ended up getting Hawkeye from the Avengers for it. Um, so, I've had it for a long time. 
I had that figure, got rid of it, and then now I have this one back. So we'll look at him in a minute when we go to compare, but I did want to show off the fact that this Daryl Dixon will and can pull off the exact same pose. The, uh, the, the, the classic pose from the show, like the first one came modeled in, um, where he's got the, um, the crossbow pulled up to his cheek, uh, and he's able to, um, have it cocked and ready to go. So he can get in this position, just a little bit of finagling and you can get him into it. And it looks amazing. You can also get him to where he drops it and puts the, the, um, the stock of it underneath his arm and he's carrying it more like that. Uh, and then you can just untilt the head. So we definitely will take a look at the articulation because this is a very well articulated figure, which is not something that one gets to say very much with a McFarlane figure. So, um, but Daryl does look great holding his crossbow either up or down. He looks, um, let's see, his hands are really tight and uh, the joints are fragile. So I definitely don't want to do anything that would um, snap any of these tiny little joints. Um, but you can see Daryl looks pretty fantastic, um, holding up with one arm, even, you know, dropping it down to his side, like he does from time to time. Looks pretty cool doing that, and uh, even the strap looks pretty fantastic um, when you have it slung over his shoulder. And you could get his hand up there, hold the strap if you want, but it's unnecessary. Um, he looks really good. <clears throat> so this figure is very well articulated. The crossbow works great. And uh, any position you put him in with the crossbow is going to look pretty awesome. So let's get the crossbow out of the way. Pretty much said that word enough on this review. And I want to show, while we've got him turned around, definitely want to show off the... Um, The, the back of the vest. Oh, well, great. Now I've gotten it to where it's focusing on the stuff on the wall. But you can see here that um, he does have the, uh, the angel wings um, on the back of his vest, which looks pretty, pretty fantastic. I'm really glad they added that detail in there. Um, it is sort of sleeveless. You can see, well, it's very sleeveless. You can see the shirt underneath. Uh, I definitely want to zoom in here. Now, McFarlane says that they use a, um, a laser scanning technology um, when, when producing these figures. And it's sort of... Uh, they go in and they scan the actors and um, it, it gives a, a more true likeness. Um, I can't really say that this is a spot on Daryl Dixon. I, I don't think it is. But, you know, compared to the original Daryl Dixon that we got, and I have to admit, this two-pack version um, that I got with Merle Dixon looks way better. The head sculpt is way, way better. Um, this one here is way better than the original um, it's the exact same head sculpt, but the paint apps are way better, and it just makes for an overall better face. Um, I think this is better than the original one we got, but it's not as good as this. But it's still not spot on. But you do have the longer hair, the squintier look. I mean, for me, I can tell that that is most definitely Norman Reedus. And in some positions, his head actually looks better. The squinty eyes, the um, the sort of squint, the, the higher cheek muscles... Uh, I definitely can tell that that's him. Um, it looks, looks pretty fantastic. I'm not going to complain too much. Moving down the figure, the joints on the arms don't look as bad as um, the first round that we got. Um, you can see a fair amount of dirt and muck on these dirty jeans. Um, turning around, you can see the pink um, bandana that he always has hanging out of his back pocket and then moving down. To his feet. I really hope, because I know we're getting a new Rick, but I hope they, uh, the new Rick that we get has some pants and boots like these because they boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. And uh, they, because they look pretty, pretty awesome. This foot looks like it's kicked um, to the side, but it's really, it's really not. And uh, right here on the front, going back up a little bit, you can see the torn knee. Um, that's just painted on. Um, and when you bend his leg, you'll notice that 
the joint is not painted as well so that looks a little looks a little weird um, but you know it is what it is sorry the camera's like focusing on the on the table that I'm reviewing on so um but one of the things that's so impressive about this figure is I don't know why it's so impressive because it seems like such an easy thing to do is that even when he's not holding the crossbow his arms are in perfect proportion to the rest of his body and they look quite nice and natural and that was the one thing that you could not say about the first release Daryl because his arms were sculpted in a manner to where he only looked good holding his crossbow so you had one arm that was longer than the other and he just looks really weird and that's why I always called him crazy arms because he looked kind of bizarre but I would say his pants did have a nice paint job on them and uh, you can see the red bandana, bandana hanging out of his pocket so from the waist down this figure was not that bad from the waist up this is pretty much a mess so taking a look at the articulation uh he heads on a ball joint so you've got full range of motion there um the hair is really cool because it's actually a separate piece from the head and so you do have it kind of draping down around his ears which is really nice his head feels like a very soft um it's not squishy but it, it is a softer plastic um arms go up they're on a full 360 ball joint um he, he's got a swivel and a ratchet joint at the elbow and he's got a um, a ratchet joint and a swivel at the wrist so full range of motion at all joints uh, up on his arms um, he does have waist articulation the this is really nice that the uh, knife sheath is actually connected to the upper torso so when you spin it the it, it sort of goes with him um, and if you notice um, the jacket is connected to his um, ab crunch so so the figure does have an ab crunch that well comes completely apart that's interesting so you can see exactly how this figure is made so the shirt the lower shirt has the um, bandana and the knife sheath attached to it man the engineering on this is pretty decent this is really cool and then the upper shirt and the vest is made onto the upper torso now this is going to be a bitch to put back together uh, I can just see it. The rest of the review will be me trying to put this thing back together. Um, so that's really uh, impressive. That that upper torso joint was hidden so well, I didn't even see it. So that's really cool. Yeah, you. I mean, you can barely... Let me zoom in and show you guys this. Because you can barely see that joint at all, which is impressive on a 5-inch figure. I mean, you can clearly see where the cut is. When you zoom in but at first blush I did not notice that it's really nice so you can see that the legs have a lot of range of motion due to him riding a motorcycle so they go out really far I mean it's no Van Damme but that's a really good um, range of motion legs can go all the way back but you do have this awkward hip thing poking out the legs go all the way forward and then you've got um, a swivel and a ratchet at the knee and then feet are very well articulated with a rocker and slide up slide down not a whole lot of range of motion in the foot but what do you need that this figure is not only I, I'm just gonna go out and say it not only is this the best articulated um, figure um, McFarlane has put out from their Walking Dead TV series it's also the best um, painted and the best engineered uh, and there is absolutely no reason that moving forward that the rest of the Walking Dead figures cannot be this articulated or this well painted or sculpted this is a fantastic fantastic figure and it should set the bar for what all Walking Dead figures should be for McFarlane moving forward so let's get Daryl on this motorcycle and wrap this thing up oh wait this thing looks nice. I love it. I'm really digging the way this looks. I, I think I uh, forgot to put the uh, the crossbow on the front. So we'll snap that on real quick. But man, I got to tell you, this thing is killer. I love the inclusion of that little um, base that you can snap on to the back tire. So it looks like he's actually driving this bad boy. But this looks absolutely phenomenal, and of course Daryl looks great. Um, let's keep it. Let's keep it vertical. Let's keep it. Keep it. Keep it wheel side down, Daryl. Come on now. Um, if I had one complaint, I mean I understand they made the uh, 
the bags removable. Maybe that's so that you could put somebody else on the back and they could ride with them. But I, to be honest with you, I don't know which other figures are articulated or as articulated as Daryl here. So I'm not sure anybody would be able to ride on the back. But I kind of wish they'd have made these things fit on a little better because they kind of are awkwardly placed and they don't sit very well. Uh, but man, this thing looks tough. Um, I cannot wait to add him to my Walking Dead shelf, which, you know what, I think at the end of this video, I'll take you guys over to my Walking Dead shelf and kind of show it off a little bit. Uh, I don't have a lot of light over there, but it's directly behind this figure. It, you can probably see it. If you see my computer in the background, it's on a shelf right above my computer. So, um, man, this is a fantastic set. Um, you know, I, I don't know how readily available this thing is at your local Toys R Us's, um, but it, even if you guys need to plunk down and on an online order to pick this guy up please do so even at an even at a higher rate it's totally worth it um this is probably the pinnacle of engineering and detail and articulation and paint and sculpting on, on a set that i've seen in quite a while especially from mcfarland oh i love how um his foot um kind of sinks down on the foot peg but it also sits right under the clutch so he can kick the clutch up just like he would on a regular bike that's very nice nice detail this set is amazing kudos to mcfarland toys and their walking dead sculpting group because they are killing it literally with this figure release in this set so here's to hoping that some more motorcycles are come or more vehicles uh, man could you imagine getting like a big old box set of abraham uh you know having his abraham's you know vehicle that they had before it uh before it went kapluk that would be pretty fantastic uh this thing is it's badass, and I can't say enough about it. So I'm just going to, you know, instead of sitting here and saying how fantastic it is, I'm going to get the hell out. But uh, let's take a look at my Walking Dead shelf real quick before we, uh, before we get out of here. Okay, so here's my, uh, my Walking Dead shelf. It's kind of not in my detail because I kind of wanted to set them apart. But you can see here we've got the old original Rick, the first wave Rick that doesn't really look like Rick. You've got Shane, which was a sad release couple of zombies back there. You can see the charred zombie, the screwdriver, and the eye zombie, and the biter zombie from wave one. Old Daryl, new Daryl. Got the well zombie going on. We've got another Rick that doesn't look like Rick. And Carl. There's the uh, the 10-inch um, Daryl Dixon, which we've looked at before. Michonne and her pets. Uh, one of the really cool things I wanted to point out, you'll see that um, Carl does have his gun with the silencer. That was one of the neat additions. That that pistol did not come with Carl. We, we, we saw this when I reviewed Carl, that it was not a smart idea for McFarlane Toys to release a figure, especially in toy stores with a kid with a gun. Um, very sensitive to that and very glad they didn't do that. That gun actually came with Tyrese, and so finally they could uh, complete the uh, the set there. God, Daryl looks so tough over there. But uh, you've got Michonne, one of my favorite figures, one of the best in this series. You've got her two pets back there. We all know who they are. Um, you've got um, Andrea and the, and the uh, governor, which we just learned we're getting another governor in a long coat. Um, good guy governor, as they called him before he went bad again. Um, you've got um, prison guard zombie back there. You've got Glenn. Oh, Glenn is such a good release. Maggie is pretty dang awesome. We got Merle and Little Merle back there going on. And then everybody's favorite big bad boy, Tyrese, looking tough as nails. And we already know who the next wave is going to be. It's going to be um, Prison uh, Yard Rick, which is going to be awesome. We're going to get uh, Carol, um, Abraham Ford, um, Herschel with a removable leg, which is really cool. And then the zombie for that one will be bungee guts zombie it'll be a zombie who you can hang from his guts so uh, i apologize for the lens flare i'm not trying to pull no jj abrams on us but i did want to show off my uh, walking dead shelf here that's kind of isolated on my wall between my humberto ramos um, sketch of batman and my uh, uh, darwin cook sketch um, got to meet both of those artists at uh, dragon con so they were kind enough to give me sketches so uh yeah i get to check out this shelf all the time i love it it keeps me completely inspired and it's one of the best shelves i got i'm gonna have to move it to somewhere else because this wave seems like it's going to keep going and not stopping anytime soon so i'm gonna need a bigger shelf as they say and toy collecting world. So uh, thank you guys for joining us on this review. Um, again, sorry for the uh, the lost wave of figures over here that will probably never be reviewed. I uh, if I get enough requests, maybe I'll go back and do it. 
uh, for you guys. So uh, as always, we're going to ask if you dug the review, please like, comment, or subscribe. And be sure to join us right here for all of our brand new toy reviews on ungrownups.com or right here at youtube.com slash ungrownups. So until next time, peace.